Okay, uh, so let's make a start. The first thing I want to do is just to remind you key points from what we said last time that I'm going to need you to keep in mind whilst we're thinking this time about some problems. So a symmetry is a transformation or a way of changing an object um, which preserves some properties we care about. We're going to have to specify which properties we care about, which ones we don't. That's going to be quite important today. Um, we can always undo symmetries by doing some other transformation that also preserves that property. So that's what a symmetry is. One thing that we uh, played around with quite a lot last time was that we can chain symmetries together to make new ones. Or we might chain them together and get some other symmetry that we already know about. But the point is, if we chain a symmetry with another symmetry, what we get is a symmetry again. And finally, uh, whenever we have an object and we're thinking about all of its symmetries, do nothing will always be a symmetry because it preserves every property that we could possibly care about and it can always be undone by doing nothing again. So do nothing is always a symmetry no matter what our object is or which property it is that we're trying to preserve. Okay, so today we're going to think about various problems that we can solve using symmetries. Now this problem, you don't need to use symmetries to think about to solve, but I think it's a really good illustration of some of the concepts that I'm going to want to use later on. So let's imagine we've got a string of colored beads on it. They're uh, yellow and blue. I'm going to point to this one's yellow, this one's blue. And they alternate in color. So we go yellow, blue, yellow, blue. And then we keep going. I'm not going to tell you how long the string is. We keep going yellow, blue, and then we finish yellow and then blue again. So our last bead, bead is blue. And the number of beads we've got is n. So first question we're going to ask you is, do you think n is odd or even? And then we're going to go through some various ways we could think about this problem to answer that question. So there'll be a poll appearing very, very soon where you can tell us whether you think n is odd or even. But I'm going to leave you for a couple of minutes to think about that and to respond to the poll. Okay, so lots of you have come back and said n should be even. I'm going to vote that n should be even as well. So there are lots of ways that you could think about this. I'm going to think about two in particular. One is the way that some of you might have done it. I don't know. There, there are so many ways that you could think about this question. But uh, let's think about the first one. So let's think about numbering the beads from left to right. So let's start with this one being one, this one being two, this one being three, this one being four, and so on. Now this yellow bead is one, which is odd. And then we're gonna alternate odd and even all the way down the bead because odd and even numbers do alternate. But the colors alternate as well. So whenever we have an odd number, we alternate to get an even number. So we go from one to two. And we also go from yellow to blue because our colors alternate in exactly the same way that the numbers alternate from odd to even. So we've got this direct correspondence between being even in the number that's written on you and being a blue bead and being odd with the number that's written on you and being a yellow bead. And because we finish with the blue bead, that means when we kind of use this numbering system to count our beads, we're going to end with an even number, which means we've got an even number of beads in total. So that's one way that you might think about this problem. Another way which you might think about this problem is that actually our beads arise in pairs. So here's a pair. Here's a pair, and here's a pair, and here's another pair. Always with a yellow bead by a blue one. 
So if we actually pair them up in this way, if we imagine this is our first pair here coming down, and this is our second pair coming down, and then we keep going until we get to the last pair over here coming down over here. Then actually, we can see that our beads are paired up nicely with each other and we could swap them over if we like. Or we could not swap them over, but we can definitely pair them up. We can definitely assign them each a partner. So if we pair them up like this, we've got a set of yellow beads on one side and a set of blue beads on the other side. And there's the same number of beads in each colour, and we know that because we've, we've paired them up. We've given you a, a way of matching them one to the other. And so our total number of beads has got to be even because it's the number of blue beads plus the number of yellow beads, but the number of yellow beads is the same as the number of blue beads. So actually, n is twice the number of blue beads. Now, what does this have to do with symmetries? Well, actually, another way of saying that is there's a symmetry that swaps each yellow bead with its partner blue bead. So this is kind of what I mean by pairing them up. So we can imagine swapping these beads over. And what that's doing up here is it takes every yellow bead and it swaps it with the blue bead that comes after it. Now, if we do that symmetry twice, if we say swap the bead with the bead that comes after you if you're yellow or with the bead that comes before you if you're blue, and then imagine recolouring if you like, then uh, we'll end up have, we'll have done nothing in the end, right? We, we swap over, we swap back. If you swap and then swap back, that's the same as doing nothing. So every bead does have a really good partner. Every bead um, knows which bead its partner is. Um, and that means that our beads are in these nice pairs, uh, which gives us a way of, of pairing them up. So that's how to see this as, as being a bit like a symmetry. Well, exactly being a symmetry, not being like a symmetry. So here's another problem. Uh, it's very, very similar. Let's suppose I've got exactly the same setup, but now my last bead is yellow. Uh, is n odd or even in that case? OK, so most of you have come back and said that you think the number of beads is odd. Uh, that's true. It, it is odd. Uh, and I want to give a similar argument to the last argument we gave to get you warmed up for some of the arguments that are going to be similar to this, but in slightly more tricky contexts. So what we did last time was we paired all the beads up. But because we've got an odd number uh, of beads, well, we hope we've got an odd number of beads, we should fail to pair them up when we try to. So we're going to try to do the same thing again. And there isn't going to be a symmetry preserving the number of beads of each color that swaps every yellow bead with the blue bead after it. We can't possibly do that. For example, if I try to swap this yellow bead with the blue bead that comes after it, there isn't one. That, that doesn't make sense to do. But if we keep this one still, then actually, if we look here, this string of beads looks very similar to the uh, string of beads we had before. So we can imagine saying, let's swap these two over. Let's swap these two over. And let's swap these two over. And this one's got a partner that comes just before it, but it's in the dot, dot, dot. 
So we can't see the yellow bead this one pairs with, but I promise you it's there. Okay, so we hold this N bead still and we swap the rest of them. And that gives us a pairing uh, of all of the beads except the last one. So that finds that every bead a, a unique partner except maybe the last one. So it looks a bit like this if we imagine chopping here and sending this over here. And then the same with these two beads going here, these two over here, and then these two go down to the bottom here, and then this last yellow bead is fixed on its own. And again, doing the symmetry twice, doing this, if I say, swap these two things over and then swap them back, that's the same thing as doing nothing at all. So that means that if I say, look at where you are sent by this symmetry to this yellow bead, it says, okay, well, I'm sent to this blue bead. And if I say, look at where you are sent by this symmetry to the blue bead, it says, oh, I'm sent to this yellow bead. And that's why giving this symmetry really is the same thing as giving a pairing because doing this symmetry twice does nothing at all. And every bead thinks that where it's sent is the same as the bead that should be sent to itself. So they're paired up very nicely. So we get a pairing on all of the beads, except this one that's fixed, that doesn't move anywhere. If you like, this one's kind of paired with itself. So what that tells us is that we've got an even number of beads that are nicely divided into pairs, given by this set here. And then we've got another bead left over. So our total number of beads is going to be some even number accounted for by this, this uh, set of beads, which are nicely divided into pairs, plus one, this fixed bead here. So our total number is one more than an even number, so it's an odd number. Now that's a kind of convoluted and long way of thinking about it, but I want you to bear that way of thinking in mind when we're working on the problem that I left you with last time, which is about to appear. So the, this problem, it's a difficult problem. I expect us to find this quite, quite challenging, but you know, we like a challenge, so that's good. So the numbers one to nine are written one in each circle in this configuration here. It says above here, it should say to the right. Um, the sums along the sides, so if I take a sum where I take the entry in this circle and I add it to the entry in this circle, and then I add the result to the entry in this circle, and I add the result to the entry in this circle, that's supposed to be the same no matter which side of the triangle I choose. And uh, I'm going to call the number that I get when I do the sum along each side t. And I want to prove that if it's possible to fill this in with the numbers one to nine so that the totals are all the same and are the number T, then it should also be possible to fill it out with uh, and get a, a total along the side that's given by 40 minus T. So just as an example of uh, how this should work, if you look down this triangle down the side, I have three plus eight, which is 11. 11 plus 4 is 15, 15 plus 5 is 20. So if I sum along here, I get 20. Similarly, 3 plus 9 is 12, plus 1 is 13, plus 7 is also 20. And then 5 plus 2 is 7, plus 6 is 13, plus 7 is also 20. I don't quite have room for that at the bottom. So let's just put that there. So this is what the problem is aiming for. This is an example with the total t being 20. And note that I've used every number exactly once. There's no repeats and I have to use every number from one to nine. So now that we have a feel for what the problem is asking, the way that I want us to try and think about to solve this problem is to find a pairing or set up a symmetry uh, that takes a configuration with the total t and swaps it and pairs it up with something with total 40 minus t. Now, why is that a good idea? That's a good idea because it tells me that if I have something with the total t, 
Like if I have one example of a configuration with total T, then I must have a partner with configuration 40 minus T. So in particular, if it is possible to fill it out with total T, then I have some example with total T. I can look at its, its partner, which I'm asserting will have total 40 minus T. If I can come up with a way of doing that pairing, that isn't going to be easy. But if I can come up with a way of doing that pairing, it'll have a partner with total 40 minus T. And so I've got an example with 40 minus T, so it must be possible to fill out the configuration with something with 40 minus T. So that's kind of a difficult idea, but let's have a go. So uh, if you remember, I got you to copy down the email address uh, enrichment at ukmt.org.uk. Does anyone have any ideas for things that we might want our pairing or our symmetry to actually preserve? What's it going to want to keep the same? We're going to want to change the total from T to 40 minus T, but which things are we going to need to keep the same if we want this strategy to work? At the same time, if you could also just be thinking about things that we would want our pairing to change. I've kind of already given away what I want you, you to, to say for that, but focus on what they're preserving. I'm going to give you four minutes just to think about that, and then I'll come back and I'll explain how we're going to go ahead with this.
Okay, thank you for the emails that you sent in. So there were a few responses. Um, so a lot of you said uh, we need to be careful about making sure that we preserve this property about adding up to the same thing. And that's completely correct. If we don't have our sides continuing to add up to the same thing, uh, we, we've not shown that it's possible to fill the configuration out so that the condition on the totals is satisfied. So we need to preserve the property that if all of your sides start off by adding up to the same number, then they end up adding up to the same number. But that number would have changed from t to 40 minus t. So yeah, our condition is if you start off with the same sums, you end up with the same sums, even if the thing those sums is adding up to has changed. And the other thing, which not so many people got, because it's a little bit more subtle, is we actually need to make sure that we still have the grid filled out with the numbers one to nine. So that's one thing that we need to check that we manage to preserve. Because again, the conditions in the question are that we write the numbers one to nine, one in each circle, uh, in this configuration and that the sums are the same. So those are the two things that we need to be really careful about making sure that we still have. And the thing we want to change is we want to take a total T and we want to swap it for 40 minus T. Okay. So I'd like you to have a, a think for a minute about any symmetries that you can that change, well, maybe they change things, maybe they don't. But, uh, that change some things about the configuration, but they don't break the fact that if you've got every number, um, if we take the sum along a side or we take the sum along a different side, that doesn't affect the number we get. So can you think of any symmetries at all of these configurations that don't necessarily do what we want to the total, that don't necessarily preserve the numbers one to nine, but that do preserve the property that the totals along the sides are the same? I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to do that. If you could email to enrichment at ukmt.org again, that would be fab.
OK, so remember, what I'm looking for is a way of taking an existing solution with uh, total T, for example, the one that we had with the total 20, and a way of changing that particular configuration that gives me another one where I've still got all of the entries on any side uh, adding up to the same thing. Now, uh, you gave me some really interesting examples, actually. Some of you said, let's, let's rotate the whole triangle. And that's great. Uh, if we rotate the triangle, then we've just swapped the sides around. So we've just swapped which numbers are on which side, but we're definitely not ruining the totals. So that's a really good example. Uh, there were other rotations that we had last time. So a lot of you were looking at the symmetries of the equilateral triangle, which we studied last time. And absolutely, um, you can use those. And there they're, they're are great symmetries that you, you could be using. Um, unfortunately, obviously, that one won't change the total from t to 40 minus t. It will keep the total the same. But that's a, a really good place to start thinking about the symmetries of this object. Um, another symmetry, which you've, you've always got, is you can do nothing at all, uh, and that would be that would be great. Uh, it will preserve the uh, the property that the sides sum to the same thing. Um, it won't do anything else though. So yeah, that's not our favourite symmetry for this problem, but it is always a good symmetry to remember it's there. Another thing you could do is you could add one to every entry, and what would that do is it would take the total up by four on every single side because we would gain one extra from every cell when we add it up into the total and seeing this there's four cells on each side that would increase the total by four um, that's that's not a great symmetry that for this problem because it doesn't preserve the numbers one through nine but you know it's a good start it's a good thing to think about uh, another one which is really interesting is you could send every entry x for example to its negative that would definitely work with the totals being right because it would send the total t to the total negative t. So um, we're going to have a quick poll on these. So the symmetry do nothing. Remember, the things that we want to do are change the total from t to 40 minus t. We want to preserve the numbers 1 through 9. And we want to also make sure the sums of the sides are the same. For the symmetry do nothing, which of those things do you think we managed to do? There's going to be a poll. I'm going to give you a minute to respond to that. And then we'll go through which of those things it manages to do. So in the case of do nothing, it preserves the numbers one to nine, which is one thing we want to preserve. It also preserves the condition on the, uh, on the sum along the sides, but it doesn't change the total. Um, most of you got that it preserved one of those and that it didn't change the total. And then I'm just going to go through these for the rest of them. So if we add one to every entry, instead of the numbers one to nine, we're going to have the numbers from 2 to 10. And also, um, we are going to actually manage to keep the sum along the sides the same, as we said before, because it will increment it by 4. But we're going to go from t to t plus 4, which probably isn't going to be the same thing as 40 minus t. OK, uh, and if we send every entry x to minus x, then we're going to get a total of minus t, which isn't what we want. We want 40 minus t. Uh, and we are going to preserve the sums along each side being the same, but we're going to have the numbers minus 1 to minus 9 instead of 1 to 9. If you could email in, though, some symmetries that do preserve the numbers 1 to 9, even if they break the condition on the sums of sides or they, break, they don't work for the total, we'll try and figure out how we could actually make the numbers 1 to 9 staying the same work. 
and then we'll try and think about how we can do both of those together and we'll have a little play around. So if you could email enrichment at ukmt.org.uk with your ideas of symmetries that will preserve the numbers one to nine being the things that we've got written down. Okay, again, uh, we had some of you noticing that the symmetries that we used last week, which this rotation here, or doing that rotation twice, or even the reflection that we talked about last time in this line, or in this line, or in this line, those will all preserve the numbers one through nine, because we're just swapping them around. Um, so that's, that's a great symmetry to have noticed. Uh, some other symmetries that a couple of you spotted, uh, we could swap the number one with the number two, swap the number three with the number four, swap the number five with the number six, swap the number seven with the number eight and fix the number nine. And if you remember the string of beads that we had earlier, that's kind of like combining the two solutions we had where we numbered the beads from left to right. And then we were also thinking about fixing the M bead and then swapping them over. So this is kind of the same symmetry of these numbers one to nine, where we're thinking of the numbers as beads on a string that are colored and we're swapping them over. So that's a possible symmetry. We could also fix the other uh, end of the, the uh, string of beads and we could fix the number one and then we could swap two with three and four with five and six with seven and eight with nine. Now, the problem with that is we have no idea whatsoever what it's gonna do to our totals. It could completely mess things up. It could do what we want occasionally but in general it almost certainly won't and we also don't know what it's going to do to our conditions of sums along sides either because for example if two is here and three is here and we swap them over but we end up swapping other entries in a way that preserves where they are maybe these two swap maybe these two swap and maybe these two swap we've got no way whatsoever of knowing whether or not we've preserved our entries, uh, sorry, the, the totals of our entries. So, but these are good symmetries for, for preserving the numbers one through nine. We're gonna think a little bit more about things like these. Obviously these ones in particular don't work, but we're gonna try and find something similar that might. So let's just take stock of what we've learned so far. If you think about the symmetry where we added one to every entry, we found that that took the total up by four, right? Because we, if we had a number in here and we added one to it, a number in here and we added one to it, a number in here and we added one to it, a number in here and we added one to it. When we added them all together, we'd get the total that we would have got, except we've got four extra ones to add on at the end. So that increments it by four. So if we add a number K or we add one K times, that's gonna change our total from T to T plus four K. So that's one symmetry that we've thought about. We've also noticed that we could send every entry X to something like minus X. And that's also not going to ruin the, uh, the edges having the same total because it's going, to, uh, it's going to just make every sum the negative of the sum it was before. We've also learned that if we pair up the numbers between one and nine and think about doing some swaps, then we get things that play really nicely with keeping the numbers one to nine in the right place. So I'm gonna think of some ways of combining these ideas now to see if we can actually come up with something that does what we want. So again, here's an opportunity for you to email in. Can you see any way of chaining together these two things in a way that will play nicely with wanting the total t to go to the total 40 minus t. 
you could email to enrichment at ukmt.org.uk, I'll give you a couple of minutes to do that. And uh, the logic we're using here is we know that if we chain together things that preserve some properties nicely, we'll still preserve those properties nicely. And we know that this symmetry preserves the totals being the same. And this symmetry also preserves the totals being the same. So if we chain them together, we're not going to ruin the totals. So let's, uh, it doesn't actually matter which order you think about this, this in, you can do it in either order and end up with uh, the, the same thing essentially. So this is supposed to be very, very tricky. So the fact that some of you emailed in was kind of amazing to me. This was supposed to be really challenging, but some of you are managing to make some progress, which I was very surprised by. Um, so if we change t to minus t, we've uh, negated the total so far. So that's one move we can do. And we know that we can also do the move add 4k onto the total. So if we do minus t to minus t and then minus t to minus t add 4k, what that's the same thing as doing essentially is chaining together doing this move and then doing add one 10 times. I told you this was tricky. So if we want this to end up as being 40 minus t, we'd need 4k to be the same thing as 40, so we'd need k to be 10. And that's actually sending every entry x to the entry minus x, and then adding k, which is 10, to every entry. So that's sending x to 10 minus x. And if we actually look at what that does, that sends the number 1 to the number 9. It sends the number 2 to the number 8. It sends the number 3 to the number 7. It says that it sends the number four to the number six, and it sends the number five back to itself. So this does actually give us a pairing on the numbers one to nine, which is really good. That's something that we said that we wanted to do. And in the context of the, the beads on a string uh, way of looking at it, that's a bit like fixing the middle yellow bead and then pairing up the first, uh, the first bead with the last bead and the second bead with the second to last bead. That's that's what that looks like on the, in that context. So yeah, that's the same thing as doing the, a pairing with the numbers one to nine, two to eight, three to seven, four to six, and fixing five. So this symmetry preserves the numbers one to nine because it pairs them up nicely. It also uh, changes the total from T to 40 minus t. And because we built it out of two symmetries, that's t goes to minus t and t goes to t plus 4. What? Well, uh, sorry, let me say that again. Because we built it out of two symmetries, namely send every entry x to its negative and add some constant number to every entry. Because both of those symmetries preserve the condition that the, the total along the sides is the same everywhere, when we chain them together, we still preserve that condition. So because we built it out of those building blocks, we're also preserving the condition of the sums along the sides. So what we've produced is a symmetry which takes any triangle with a configuration like this, and it it sends it to a, a partner, which has the total 40 minus the original total, but it still has the numbers one to nine and it still satisfies the condition of the sums along the sides. So what we've shown is that for every triangle that works with a total T, it's got a partner with a total 40 minus T. And that's great, that's exactly what we wanted because whenever we have a triangle with the total T that exists, we know it's got a corresponding partner with the total 40 minus t. So we can't have the total t without ha also having the total 40 minus t living somewhere else. So that's exactly what we wanted to show. So this is an example of how coming up with a symmetry can solve a problem that would also be really very difficult if you didn't have a symmetry to do some work for you. That's all I have to say for today. Um, I suspect lots of you have 
questions about how that worked, uh, you're more than welcome to email those into enrichment at ukmt.org.uk and I will respond in due course. Thank you very much for today.